Hi, I'm Duncan Ferguson, and I'd like to, uh, first of all, thank the American Academy of Veterinary Pharmacology and Therapeutics for inviting me to give this presentation. Uh, I'd like to talk uh, in this presentation about the uh, where we were in 2020, in early 2020, uh, when the pandemic hit and how it affected education and veterinary medicine, and what we learned about the good aspects of the technology of online learning during this period. In this presentation, I'd like to uh, give my perspective of about 30 years uh, working with distance learning from the early days of Veterinary Information Network in the early 90s through using uh, electronic means to communicate with students for the last 30 years in a hybrid fashion in vet school. In the last uh, approximately seven years uh, with the Med Academy, during which, of course, we experienced the pandemic. And uh, in this period of time, particularly in the time uh, at the end of my academic career at University of Illinois, in the last seven years, I've been continuing to work with uh, my colleagues in the College of Education, Mary Kalansis and Bill Cope. And the didactic framework that I'm going to try to model will be largely from them. Um, but in an attempt to translate it to what it means for us in veterinary medicine. Um, we'll look back at what actually happened, what are the adjustments that were made, some of the comments that I made in blogs at that time, and then uh, try to see what we learn uh, from the pandemic itself and then summarize. So I thought it would be first useful to define affordance. Affordance uh, define and coined in a sense in the educational context by Consus and Cope uh, as part of their new learning um, initiative is the range of possibilities of a tool for that uh, that can be used for education and specifically the type of uh, tool that can be or technology that can be used in innovative approaches to active learning. Now as part of the a framework I'd like to, to use to enter into our discussion about what happened during the pandemic and veterinary education. Um, it's useful to talk about the five theses on the future of learning that were proposed well before the pandemic by Kalansis and Cope. And we'll start with the first two, uh, theses one and three, as I've highlighted here, there will be no pedagogical differences between learning in person and learning remotely. And I think that that's that sort of no significant difference uh, between the learning when they're used independently has certainly been um, out there for a while. And we would have hoped would have translated to um, at least preclinical learning in the, during the pandemic for veterinary medicine. Now, or it might be a little more controversial for uh, that medicine is that there'll be no scale of class. We're not talking about changing vet medicine to MOOCs, uh, but um, the idea is that the potential is for you to deal with very large classes and to deal with them at, at, a, at a distance as well. So let's keep those in mind. Now, thesis number four, as highlighted here, is that adaptive and personalized learning will not be at the expense of learning community. So they're, they're very big into um, learning and co learning with other people, collaborating and learning. And, uh, and, and adaptive learning, personalized learning, is certainly that's something that uh, digital technologies can help. And so let's think about that, particularly in the context of pharmacology, in that I believe that in educating uh, students about pharmacology or veterinarians, you can certainly put them in a just-in-time mode to learn something if they know the framework for what to look for and, and they have a basis of evidence-based medicine to uh, judge it by. Now, to show that technology is, is right on the cusp, really, of being able to totally individualize training, I want to put out the, um, the idea that, first of all, that we admit students, at least in North America, we admit students with highly selective processes, interviews, et cetera. And as an, having been an administrator in a vet school, I know that it's, it's both considered a, a big failure, not only of the students, but of the system if we don't try to retain them. There's legal issues, there's personal issues, there's financial issues. Let's do the best we can to lift them up um, in, in 
and to the appropriate level, of course, for for performance. Uh, technology now has the ability to facilitate this individualized training for those that need extra help or differentiated help. And an example on the right here is Conmigo, which is uh, Khan Academy has just released a chat GTP4 uh, mentor, if you will, called a learning guide. They call it a learning guide. And um, this will, as you, if you ever try it, allows the student to um, basically be guided or mentored through a question um, in many different topics and not be given the answer, but being guided towards the answer uh, can be flipped to an ed educator mode where the uh, tutorial, uh, the tutor will try to um, give it advice to a teacher about how to teach that particular subject. Now, collaborative learning, and we'll talk a lot about later, so I'll, I'll, I'll come back to that later. Now, theses two and five, I want to lump together because it's about assessment. And um, first note that um, this is something that drives our instruction, it drives how our students work. And the students um, have, while they've become adapted to it, they do struggle with uh, machine gradable multiple choice questions. Faculty um, prefer that because they don't, you know, they, they don't have to deal with a lawyer later. They don't have to deal with uh, a lot of back and forth or statistics, et cetera. However, we all know that the learning from this can be very short term. Um, the distinction that Cope and Klontz say is that it should, you should be instructing and assessing all at the same time and, and therefore needing to have some analytics that a judge um, all the effort and as a peer, as a collaborator, and as a knowledge maker in their sense. And the other thing that they would like to get rid of is the bell-shaped curve. They don't believe that we should uh, always have to have and distribute the class between, you know, 60 and 100 percent or whatever or below for failing, uh, that everybody should have their boats lifted to the appropriate level for performance, if possible. Now let's turn to the affordances that actually have been described by Cope and Klontz's beef that were actually put out before the pandemic as well. First of all, technology can help us make learning ubiquitous. That should be an obvious thing. It was obviously something we did, we saw in the pandemic. We should be able, as I said, to differentiate the learning, individualize it. Where I think this is maybe more controversial, where you're probably scratching your head and saying, I don't know if we can do this, is where we uh, turn the students um, away from con just consuming knowledge, you know, that they have to have a certain amount of knowledge of, to do something. I'll make a case for the fact that this is an impossible task um, to being knowledge makers, being able to judge evidence in the literature, for example, and then create something that it shows that they've synthesized the con appropriate concepts and doing so also in a variety of modes that are modern, if you will, not just text, but also images, sound and data, uh, video, for example. And that metacognition or, if you will, self-reflection about learning is an absolute key to the advancement of the learning particularly uh, as a student tries to learn on their own, um, that, they, that they've always be put back in that position of learning uh, about how they learn and what they needed to do to, to get a certain uh, piece of information or to, to solve a certain problem. And we, we have this in our own medical legal system uh, under the uh, Medicinal Drug Clar Use Clarification Act um, veterinarians are given a lot of responsibility to judge their own knowledge and to be self-corrective about that knowledge with regards to prescribing and therapeutics. Now, the last two affordances that uh, I'd like to uh, highlight uh, are collaborative intelligence and recursive feedback. And both, I think you probably sort of cringe a little bit uh, thinking about this, but let's be real. Veterinary professionals are going to be working collegially in teams, and they need to leverage um, their knowledge and those of others in order to succeed. They need to communicate. They need to be a good colleague. They need to be a peer reviewer, all of those things. So that can be practiced using a appropriate uh, learning system online. Recursive feedback also is important, um, and that 
basically this puts the um, faculty in the student of in the position of creating for the student a learning experience in which they have not just the final result to be judged but also their effort towards it the, the ability to create a draft their ability to form act as a, a peer reviewer the idea again of getting rid of that bell-shaped curve and trying to lift all boats to an appropriate level of performance